Beseech you, sir, were you present at this relation? I was, at the opening of the far dell, heard the old shepherd deliver the manor how he found it, whereupon, after a little amazedness, we were all commanded out of the chamber. Only this methought I heard the shepherd say, he found the child. I would most gladly know the issue of it. I make a broken delivery of the business, but the changes I perceived in the king and Camilla were very notes of admiration. They seemed almost with staring on one another to tear the cases of their eyes. There was speech in their dumbness, language in their very gesture. They looked as they had heard of a world ransomed or one destroyed. A notable passion of wonder appeared in them, but the wisest beholder that knew no more but seeing could not say if the importance were joy or sorrow. But in the extremity of the one... It must needs be. Here comes a gentleman that happily knows more. The news, Rogero. Nothing but bonfires. The oracle is fulfilled. The king's daughter is found. Such a deal of wonder is broken out within this hour that ballad makers cannot be able to express it. Here comes the lady Paulina's steward. He can deliver you more. How goes it now, sir? This news which is called true is so like an old tale that the verity of it is in strong suspicion. Has the king found his heir? Most true. If ever truth were pregnant by circumstance, that which you hear, you'll swear you see. There is such unity in the proofs. The mantle of Queen Hermione's, her jewel about the neck of it. The letters of Antigonus found with it, which they know to be his character. The majesty of the creature in resemblance of the mother. The affection of nobleness, which nature shows above her breeding, and many other evidences, proclaim her with all certainty to be the king's daughter. Did you see the meeting of the two kings? <gasps> no, then you have lost a sight which was to be seen. Cannot be spoken of. There might you have beheld one joy crown another. So, and in such a manner, that it seems sorrow wept to take leave of them, for their joy waded in tears. There was casting up of eyes, holding up of hands, with countenance of such distraction, that they were known by garment, not by favor. Our king, being ready to leap out of himself for joy of his found daughter, as if that joy were now become a lost cries, Oh, thy mother, thy mother! then asks Bohemia forgiveness, then embraces his son-in-law, then again worries he his daughter with clipping her. Now he thanks the old shepherd, which stands by like a weather-bitten conduit of many king's reigns. I never heard of such another encounter, which lames report to follow it and undoes description to do it. What, pray you, became of Antigonus that carried hence the child? Like an old tale still, which will have matter to rehearse, though credit be asleep and not an open ear, he was torn to pieces with a bear. This avouches the shepherd's son, who has not only his innocence, which seems much to justify him, but a handkerchief and rings of his that Paulina knows. What became of his bark and his followers? wrecked the same instant of their master's death, and in the view of the shepherd, so that all the instruments which, which aided to expose the child were even then lost when it was found. But oh, the noble combat that twixt joy and sorrow was fought in Paulina. She had one eye declined for the loss of her husband, another elevated that the oracle was fulfilled. She lifted the princess from the earth, and so locks her in embracing, as if she would pin her to her heart, that she might no more be in danger of losing. The dignity of this act was worth the audience of kings and princes, for by such was it acted. One of the prettiest touches of all, and that which angled from mine eyes caught the water, though not the fish, was when at the relation of the queen's death, with the manner how she came to it so bravely confessed and lamented by the king, how attentiveness wounded his daughter, till from one sign of dollar to another, she did with an alas, I would fain say, bleed tears. For I am sure my heart wept blood. 
Who was most marble? They're changed color. Some swooned, all sorrowed. If all the world could have seen it, the woe had been universal. Are they returned to the court? No, the princess, hearing of her mother's statue, which is in keeping with Paulina, a piece many years in the doing and now newly performed by that rare Italian master. Giulio Romano, who had he himself eternity and could put breath into his work would beguile nature of her custom so perfectly he is her ape. He so near to Hermione hath done Hermione that they say one would speak to her and stand in hope of answer. Thither with all greediness of affection are they gone and there they intend to sup. I thought she had some great matter there in hand for she hath privately twice or thrice a day ever since the death of Hermione visited that removed house. Shall we thither and with our company peace the rejoicing? Who would be thence that has the benefit of access? Every wink of an eye, some new grace will be born. Our absence makes us unthrifty to our knowledge. Let's along. Now, had I not the dash of my former life in me, would preferment drop on my head? I brought the old man and his son aboard the prince, told him I heard them talk of a fartle and I know not what. But he, at that time, overfond of the shepherd's daughter, so he then took her to be, who began to be much seasick, and himself little better, extremity of weather continuing, this mystery remained undiscovered. But tis all one to me. For had I been the finder out of this secret, it would not have relished among my other discredits. Here come those I have done good to against my will, and already appearing in the blossoms of their fortune. Come, boy, I am past mo children, but thy sons and daughters will be all gentlemen born. <laughs> you are well met, sir. You did not have to fight with me this other day. Because I was no gentleman born. See you these clothes? Say you see them not, and think me still no gentleman born? Give me the lie. Do, and try whether I am not now a gentleman born. No, you are now, sir, a gentleman born. Ah, and have been so any time these four hours. And so have I, boy. Yeah, so you have. I was a gentleman born before my father. For the king's son took me by the hand and called me brother. And then the two kings called my father brother. And then the prince, my brother, and the princess, my sister, called my father father. And so we went. And there was the first gentleman-like tears that ever we shed. We may live, son, to shed many more. <laughs> Aye, <laughs> or else twill hard luck, <laughs> being in so preposterous a state as we are. <laughs> I humbly beseech you, sir, to pardon me all the faults I have committed to your worship and to uh, uh, give me your good report to the prince, my master, Pretty son, do, for we must be gentle. Now we are gentlemen. Thou wilt amend thy life. I, and it, let your good worship. Give me thy hand. I will swear to the prince, thou art as honest a true fellow as any is in all Bohemia. Oh, you can say it, but not swear it. Not swear it. Now I am a gentleman. Let Boars and Franklin say it. I'll swear it. If it be false, son. If it... If it be ne'er so false, a true gentleman may swear it in the behalf of his friend, 
and I'll swear to the prince, thou art a tall fellow of thy hands, and that thou wilt not be drunk. But I know thou art out no tar thou art no tall fellow of thy hands, and that thou wilt be drunk. But I'll swear it, and I would thou wouldst be a tall fellow of thy hands. I will prove, sir, to my power. I, by any means, prove a tall fellow. If I do not wonder how thou darest venture to be drunk, not being a tall fellow, trust me not. Hark! The kings and the princes, our kindred, are going to see the queen's picture. Come, follow us. We'll be thy good masters. <laughs>